Oh, I'm getting ready to put the drive plate on. You can see here, flex plate if you prefer. You can see here I've got two of them stacked on top of one. Now that's a 157 tooth. Um, and this is a 164. And the weighting on them can be different. Now the one we're interested in is externally balanced Windsor is what is uh, 28 ounce. Now, that's the little torque ring I was talking about before, it's sitting on the back of the um, crank journal. And I've left a little witness mark there and there, another one here. Uh, and the reason for that is these are all staggered, and so they all fit on very, very differently. So it's important to get it, well you can only really get it the right way. Um, important when you get a drive plate, just to make this one I had, just to make sure that it fits onto the converter and onto the, um, onto the flange there. But um, we'll put this on, we'll torque it down, and we'll torque it down properly, and then we can mount the transmission up. Just dressing the engine ready for fitting, I'm putting new mounts on. These are the Mackay ones, or Mackay if you prefer. Um, top quality kit. Uh, I think it was, I was quite surprised because I just got them through Bursa and I think both engine mount and the transmission mount was something like $58. So it does pay to use the local parts supplier. In a lot of cases it's cheaper than the hundred or so dollars you'll pay online. Well we've got our little 351 uh, Windsor all hooked up to the transmission. I didn't show, or I didn't film putting the transmission on. I torqued down the flex plate or drive plate if you prefer and just bolted it up with the six bell housing bolts. So that's all ready to be sort of lifted into the car. Um, I'm just going to mount that starter, that's the clapper type. Um, and I'll do the torque converter bolts from, from inside the car. And also the transmission lines. Now these are out of a 302 XB or C, I can't remember now, I had two of those. And um, I was always going to throw these out but decided not to for some unknown reason. Now, seven or eight years later, I need them. So I'm going to clean those up, flush them right out. And, um, and then mount them. And they sort of dog leg up and they get mounted up behind the alternator. And this is where having old junker motors lying around isn't a bad thing because that's the bracket there on this Clevo. So I'll take that off and use that. Uh, also, I just filled this radiator. This radiator was new, but it was a sort of a new old stock of guy that kicking around for ages. It looked good. I just wanted to fill it with, uh, with water just to make sure it's not, uh, it's not leaking, that's looking really, really good, so I can rest assured that'll be alright once it's in the car. Look at this, a hailstorm just hit, everything's white outside, and it's flooded the garage. It doesn't, I've never seen that happen once or twice before, and it's made a little bit of a mess. It was so loud in here, I had to actually stick him up, so I just took the alternator off. These are a brilliant, brilliant alternator. They're Bosch, they're external regulator, really easy, single wire hookup. These are the things I've always liked using, but I wanted to keep the wiring original in the car. <clears throat> and to do that, I've sort of pulled apart the original alternator to clean it up, but I've noticed the um, little slipper rings or the commutator, whatever you want to call it, is really, really sort of dug in there. Normally you can take that out, pop it in a lathe, and turn those down, but they might be a little bit too far gone. Having said that, the bearing's good. It's got a nice bearing in it. Um, but I don't need a powerful alternator in this car because I'm not going to use anything aside from driving lights and even then uh, most of the time I won't be driven at night anyhow so I'm going to suck it and see with that one. I might even, um, apparently my brother's got an alternator, I'll have a look at his. And I finally got the right inner tie rod ends and you can see um, looking at this there's a bit of thread poking through. Um, it's taken, this the fourth set I've had. This car is 1969, it's a September 69 car and so it should have had the larger ones, I would have thought, but um, according to the catalogues, the, they changed in June. I thought they changed in 1970 with the Cleveland, but who knows, it's a long time ago now. I'm using this clapper starter motor. This isn't a very old one at all. In fact, it's got manufacturing stickers and all sorts of stuff on it, but the problem it's got, and this is it's sort of clashed with the other ring gear, is that some clown has actually uh, filed these holes out to fit on the 157 tooth starter so I'm going to um the Bendix gear looks pretty good in it so I just found this bit of aluminium sleeve I'm just going to knock that in and file it down to make that or to reduce that hole to the size it should be and then I can use a, a conventional bolt through it which should centralize it quite well so I'll just use a rat tail file in there and a flat file to keep it nice and uh, level at the top and that's sort of going in really nicely now I might just have to dock that down a bit, but I'll just top, take that bit off the back and that should be nice and central and back to its standard size. If it doesn't work, I'll just buy another one, but if I can save it quit here, I will. There we go, I've just taken that little bit out there. 
And there we've got a nice central hole, and that's sort of assuming that the guy that filed it out in the first place did it centrally, but I think he did. So that should be alright, that'll work well. It doesn't look too bad at all, it's actually D2AF. It looks like a genuine Ford part, it's in really, really good condition. Um, so I've just given it, whoops, I've just given it a bit of a clean up, and so I'll stick it in, but I'll crank the thing over on the ground just to make sure that it's going to mesh properly. It's got a 9. Uh, tooth Bendix on it. I'm pretty sure that's right with the 164 ring gear, but I will check that out. There she is fitted up. It's nice and central, so it should be really, really good, but um, time will tell. I'll give it a kick in the guts and see how she goes. the engine now. That bloody sump's also pretty big but I don't think that is entirely the problem. All sorts of packing and bed spreads and all sorts of stuff just to keep it. I'm just worried about damaging anything down here. It'll start to level out and it'll just come in for landing. I might have to move the thing around a bit. Don't you what? Fancy across the road wants it to be now. Well, good on you, Charlie, you can do it. I've got my hands full here, can you see? Right, so the engine's sort of dropping in. I've dropped it down as far as I want to for now um, because if we look underneath the car, Transmission's hanging right down, so I'm going to stick a jack under that just to level it out. And we don't want the mount contacting the ground either. And then we can sort of level the thing out and then drop it onto its mounts. Nice little Windsor poo sitting in there now. Got to leave plated. Um, it's got hope. There's a bloody hole that marries up with it. And it is rather fantastic. So I can put, I can just sort of bolt it up. And once it's hanging there, I can sort of take the engine crane out and, um, yeah, take the engine crane out and get the car up and the jacks and sort of install everything properly. But this will just mean that I can get it all ready and, there and them so I can put the handbrake on and all this sort of business. Oh, for now, I'll just go around the other side and do that. Well, finally, we have a 351 Falcon. So the engine's all in. Uh, none of the systems are hooked up yet. And one thing I'm a little bit worried about, I'm wondering if it's sitting a little bit high, manifold's going to be hell to get in. And it's quite tight. And the ones that I've got here aren't going to fit. I'll go through those um, later, but it could be the way the engine's sitting. It's all sort of bolted up down there, but there's just a bit of a space issue. Air clean is just sitting there, spark plugs are loose. Um, and of course, I've got to take these pulleys off and try and figure out why uh, there was run out. So I'm not happy with that either. But uh, that's a start. I did it after work today. Um, so now it's just the, the small stuff, I suppose, to get it mechanically sorted. Hi there. What are you doing? Oh, I know what that's for. Is that for someone's birthday? Like maybe, mine? Maybe not. Yeah. I'll get out of your way then. <laughs> Hello. Dad. War horse. <laughs> War horse. <laughs> <laughs> 
Now if you have a lazy $10 in your wallet, buy yourself one of these, you won't stop using it. This is the thinnest bottle, so it is impervious to solvers. Now I normally use this with water, and they're really, really good for small areas of colour sanding. Uh, topping up batteries, you can just give it a little squeeze and the water comes out. And also checking for vacuum leaks around um, carburetor bases and inlet manifolds. Now I've got prep sole in this, I've got wax and grease remover in this, and I'm going to use it to clean my transmission lines. So I'm just using wax and grease instead of thinner, just on the off chance it splashes up, it doesn't take the paint off the car. I'm just going to fire a bit into there. I'll just swill it around and blow it out with a bit of compressed air. Just scraping this paint off to eradicate that run out we had. I can't see anything obvious there which would give rise to it, but I think I'll just take this off anyway, just to eliminate that. A bit more here. Been doing a bit more work on the XW. I've got the uh, the wiring lead where the neutral starts, which is sort of finalised. Um, convoluted tubing going through here, um, some ignition wiring and coil and all that sort of stuff. And it's also I've got it down here to protect it from heat coming off the exhaust. It's not very XW Falcon. It doesn't matter. It'll look all right. Um, we've got a viscous fan on. Got the um, radiator hoses on down there as well. Um, washer bag and all that sort of crap is in. Not worried about that side of it. I am worried about the kick down a little bit being right down there um, and I've got the sort of actuator light thing here I should have probably gone for the accelerator right I think it's going to come back to bite me in the bum because I'm going to have some fitting issues with some other things as well and I've also had to take the dipstick filler tube off the transmission to um, to make way for exhaust headers I need to find out what I'm going to do with that or sort of suss out what I'm going to do underneath not looking too bad the handbrake's all sort of sussed out there um, that's sort of underneath the transmission you can see that there's not a great deal to see, I don't think. It's all looking pretty good, though. I've um, done the converter up. Yeah, it's all looking pretty good. So I'm happy with that. We're just going to make sure it all sort of pans out the way we want it to. Um, most of the wiring clips are all in now. I still haven't repaired these bits here, but all the rest of this is done. That's the horn. Driving lights, it's all sort of taped up and secured. Um, and also this side as well. Um, I've run another lead for the um, for another horn. I want a high and low horn. Uh, that's just a bit of hose looped over the transmission cooler lines. I'm using one of those PWR coolers. I'm not going to use the cooler in the radiator at all. I don't like them. And I have seen transmissions fail on account of those coolers rupturing. So I'm fairly happy with how it's all looking now. Nice OEM hoses. Um, so it's not all OEM, but it should look fairly legitimate. Going to do the front shockers. There's two holes down there in the spring saddle um, where these go. Don't forget to put the rubber bushes on the bottom of those. And there's little raised sections to the edge of them uh, which fit in those two holes. So we'll just plonk those down through the holes. There we go. And secure them from underneath. Sort of manhandle these up there, the little raised sections there. And they're flat on one side. We've just got to stick them in a flat washer, a lock washer, and a nut on. We've got to do that all from in here. It can be a little bit tricky. I'm going to sort of hold them on from underneath. It can be a bit tricky. Um, sticking, just putting things on one at a time. There's a nut. You can't see from there. My hands in the way. We'll just tighten them up evenly. Don't forget the rubber components so you can damage them if you over tighten them. Go around to this side. And just a bit of a tip here. 
these just plopped in before and there's a bit of resistance there now the spring and everything's in not a bad idea just to stick these in first before you put load on this spring you can tap them in like that um, it's just better and you can see I've sort of damaged the paint under there hopefully you don't see it with these other bits on but anyway we've got a washer to go here a shocker rubber then we put our little strut tower thing on making sure we locate in that rebate and another rubber shit that was clever I got that the wrong way oh no that's right and the top goes on and then there's a, a sort of a nut and a lock nut as well um, this is a lock nut here it goes on top but we'll screw that one down first I'm a bit worried how that's sitting actually I've I'm not that happy with that. I'll, I need to almost um, just check it out. I'm not sure that I've got it on right. And then we can just get the lock nut, put it over there, and then hold that with a shifter and lock it up. Which I should fucking do now, I suppose. up a bit and just lock this up against it you can just hold that sort it and so here we've got the wheel off the ground and that spring saddles sort of uh, rotated nicely I was very very worried about that um, because I thought it was going to put the uh, shock absorbers under too much duress, but they're both sorted now and looking really, really good. Put a kick down on this thing, and um, I think it's out of an XA or XB or something. I'm not sure it's going to fit, but I've got a bunch of kick down rods here. I don't know what that is. That could be a six cylinder one or something, I'm not sure. This is an FE big block one, that's the wrong shape. I've got a couple of Ford 302 ones. Um, one was XB and one was XC. I reckon if I clean this one up, that might that might fit. It's a little bit off, but I can sort of twist it and turn it to fit. But I reckon that might be the way to go. Now I was worried when I put well before I put the front shockers on that this spring saddle uh, was was uh, the spring wasn't overpowering and it was staying off this coil here, which worried me because the shock absorber was crooked or would have been crooked, um, and I wasn't going to put it in because I thought there might be a problem with those. But it seems to be rotating quite well and working properly. It's actually quite a bit stiffer than original now but I'm pretty happy with that. We've had a bit of a win with this kick down rod. Whoops. I'm trying to hold the camera and do this at the same time. A tiny tiny bit of tweaking but that is going to fit and I'll just try and prop it over there. It's not in properly now but you can see if I open up the throttle it's actually working down there so it's clearing nicely so that I need to get a couple of E-clips. I don't think I've got any here that are going to fit, but that is a win. I was a bit worried about that. What I'm not happy about are the headers. And my brother was going to give me his, uh, some headers he bought for his Mustang, and they're beautiful ceramic coated things, beautiful things, but they don't fit down here, so I'm a little bit put off about that. So I'm in a bit of a bind with that at the moment, so I've got to come up with some solution that's viable. Right, we're going to try and address this manifold issue I've got. I did buy some headers for this from a guy down toward the uh, toward the beach, and they were absolutely knackered. The the ad description was rubbish, so I ended up sewing those on. They probably wouldn't have fitted anyway because I think they were originally for 302. Um, I'm faced with a few choices. These are the ones I was using on the engine stand. If the engine was about a half inch lower or so, they'd probably fit. They're off a an 80s car. I think the numbers E O A E. Um, they were on the engine stand. They worked quite well but I can't get them in at the moment with the engine the way it is there. They're 302 EB, ED, EF, Falcon. The bottom one there, the right end ones, just looks ridiculous. I wouldn't put them on anyway. Um, but again, you know, with the engine altered, they would probably fit. These ones here are the ones I originally put on the engine when I built it. That's a 289 Hypo Mustang, um, or 289 Hypo engine. That should fit fine. This is 302. They're an odd pair. 
Um, not sure this is going to fit. This was on this 351 engine in the Mustang, but the Mustang didn't have all this firewall business going on down here, that bracing where the um, pedal box is. Um, all of that's on the left-hand side, obviously, because it's left-hand drive, so I'll take this off and see if I can fit it on. I'm just going to take this rocket cover off to try and avoid scratching or damaging anything. If this came off the Mustang, I'm just not convinced it's going to... Oh, I'm not sure. It just means it's going to be... Oh, it goes back, it goes back there. So that'll, that'll fit on there. It just means I'm going to have to have a bit of a, a drop in the coming out. Um, so that, that'll fit. But ideally, um, I mean, I'm gonna, this is going to look a bit stupid what I'm doing here, but I'm sort of dropping it in back to front because I'm assuming that they're sort of a matched pair. And that's great. That sort of points right down. Um, that would be excellent because that means the engine pipe can be fairly straight out the back and it would flow a lot better. Um, this of course belongs on the other side but I reckon that's probably the way to go. If I can find another um, Hypo Mustang one or Hypo 289 one for this side that would be the way to go. Is it focused? Yep. So you can see here it all fits in quite neatly but down there it's coming out a little bit straight so it would need a, a sort of a dog leg in it but also the handbrake cables down there too. Um, if I can find another Hypo 289 one, you can buy them as a pair for about 600 bucks, but that is perfect. That, that would work really, really well. So I think we'll go down that road. Um, in the meantime, I'll see if I can find one. Failing that, I might stick with this one, I'm not sure. I think it'll be better with a matching pair. I'm under the car again. Mm, hang on. I'm going to stop drinking this stuff. I've been pissing like one of those fat little concrete babies in fountains. This um, this looks absolutely perfect up there where the exhaust outlet is. That's perfect. That's exactly what I wanted. This one on the other hand, um, well, it's going to have to have a bit of a dog leg in it, but it's not too bad. It doesn't look as bad under here as I thought it would. The only thing that worries me a bit um, is the handbrake cable here, and I'm going to have to fettle with that. Finding these 289 Hypo manifolds is quite a difficult task, but I'll, I'll persevere with it anyway. The other thing I've got to do is bend the um, transmission uh, filler tube slash dipstick to, to clear as well. So I'm going to apologise. I was going to put doors and everything on in this uh, chapter, but I haven't even painted them yet. Um, just a, a disclaimer, don't, uh, you should never put an engine in like this by yourself. Uh, I've done it quite a lot of times and I'm, I'm sort of used to doing this sort of thing. But uh, really you should have a minimum of three people. But um, yeah, that, that was probably a bit silly of me to, to show it like that. But um, I do apologise because I, I, I haven't done as much as I wanted to in this chapter. I've really only concentrated on the engine. So in the next chapter we'll look at sort of more panel, panel work. But I, uh, I really do hope you've enjoyed it. Um, I'm just trying to show some of the trials and tribulations, you know, the exhaust and the starter motor issue I've had and the front suspension, shock absorber issues, that sort of thing. That's why it's taken a little bit longer. So, uh, so I do hope you've enjoyed it and I'll see you later. Bye-bye.